May all beings know love. May all beings know peace. May all beings know love. May all beings know peace. Only love. Only peace. May all beings know. to those in the room and those that are online. I'm Reverend Richard Burdick, and it is my, my pleasure to welcome you into our Wednesday night experience here at Unity North Atlanta, a time of reflection, a time of meditation, a time of stillness, a time of peace, and a time of deep connection as we unite with each other in the room and also wherever you happen to be, we're uniting with you. I'm delighted to welcome back my partner on Wednesday nights, uh, Michael Burke. It's really good to have uh, Michael back here. We had a bit of a hiatus. I went away for a while. He went away for a while. He's back tonight, and he'll be back again in two weeks. And when Michael's here, I always like to take advantage of his rich, rich voice. So he's going to be uh, leading the meditation this evening, leading some readings with some information as we talk about the heart. Everything is going to center around the heart today, and so I invite you to begin the journey of tonight's experience by just bringing your attention to the heart. Michael's going to read some poetry. He's going to have some readings. He's going to maybe lead a, a guided meditation. But wherever he takes you, you're in safe hands because I can't think of a person whose heart is as big as Michael Burke's. And so I invite you to unite with my heart, with Michael's heart, and the heart of all that are gathered here this evening and the heart of all that are watching online. Take a deep breath and let's breathe into that heart space. With the idea that we're holding, may all beings know love. May all beings know peace. The heart is that receptive place. It is that open place. The heart is the place that, that knows that we're not defined by anything of this world, but only by the limits of our own mind and our own capacities to remember that we belong to each other. Continue to breathe and find your pace, find your rate, but allow your body and your mind and your spirit to just become comfortable right now. And we're going to take a John Denver chorus to lead us into that sanctuary of reflection. It's your heart to mine and my heart to yours. Talk about opening windows. Talk about opening doors. And so, if you know the song, feel free to sing with me. If you don't, hum along. Or if you prefer, just open the window and the door to your heart, to our journey this evening. 
your heart to mine my heart to yours talk about opening windows talk about opening doors my heart to yours your heart to mine love is the light that shines from heart to heart i invite you to close your outer eyes and to open your inner eyes to open up your heart more fully than it's ever been opened before and to feel a connection with all those who are holding space with you and for you this evening as you hold it for them. Your heart to mine, my heart to yours. Talk about opening windows, talk about opening doors, my heart to yours, your heart to mine. Love is the light that shines from heart to heart. Love is the light that shines from heart to Heart. Let us journey together at the level of our heart. sit in a couple of meditations and gather those thoughts within us deep inside our hearts the heart is a spiraling organ many of us live under the medical myth that the heart is a pump an idea born of an industrialized culture that views the body as a machine the heart however is so much more beautiful and fascinating than we could have imagined. Stephen Booner says, modern analysis of the heart has shown that in spite of the fact that the most powerful ventricle of the heart can shoot water six feet into the air, the amount of pressure actually needed to force the blood through the entire length of the body's blood vessels would have to be able to lift a 100 pound weight one mile high. So how does the blood move around the labyrinth-like vessels of our body? It moves of its own accord. You see, blood flow is not a simple stream like we once thought. It is in fact composed of two streams spiraling around each other, much like the image of a DNA double helix, at the center of which is a vacuum. Blood flow through living vessels, it's much more like a tornado than anything else. Such a vacuum is necessary for producing this vortex. How cool is that? The spiral dance is not only found in the bloodstream, but also in the blood cells it's themselves. Blood cells, in fact, spin on their own individual axes of rotation. They are smaller spinning cells and a larger spinning vortex. If your mind is not blown yet, let's go back to the heart. The heart itself has recently been discovered not to be a mass of muscle, but rather a helicoidal myocardial band that has spiraled in upon itself, creating its unique shape and its separate chambers. This is called the helical heart. 
and you can see Doctors Unravel It by searching Helical Heart on YouTube if you want to know more. Pair this with discoveries that the heart functions as an endocrine gland, has its own nervous system that makes and releases its own neurotransmitters and omits an electromagnetic field that is far stronger than the brain's. And we begin to move from the idea that the heart is simply a mechanical pump. It is a spiraling organ of perception. If that's not beautiful, I don't know what is. We each have this amazing heart inside of us. Let's take that into a meditation. Sit in a comfortable position and please close your eyes. For just this moment, let go of your thoughts. Let go of the outside world. Focus your attention on your spiritual heart center in the middle of your chest and be aware of your heart as a space. The heart center is a point of awareness where feelings enter. In its essence, in its essence, the heart is pure emptiness, pervaded by peace and a subtle light. This light may appear as white, gold, pale pink or blue but don't strain to find a light of any kind all you need all you need to feel is whatever is there feel your heart Resting your attention easily on your heart center. Breathe gently and sense your breath flowing into your heart. You may even want to visualize a soft pastel light or coolness pervading the chest. Feel it. Feel it. Let your breath go in and out. And as it does, ask your heart what it needs to say. And don't phrase this as an order. Just have the faint intention that you want your heart to express itself to you right now right here for the next few minutes sit and listen Your heart will begin to release emotions, memories, wishes, fears, and dreams long stored inside. And as it does, you will find yourself paying attention. You may have a flash of strong emotion positive or negative or a forgotten memory your breathing may change you may get 
gasp, sigh, or feel tears come into your eyes. Let the experience be what it is. If you daydream or drift off into sleep, don't worry. Just bring your attention back, back to your heart center, the spiraling beauty that sends life throughout all of us. listening in a heart-centered space of listening of being of remembering the still small voice of the universe ancient modern and everything in between speaking listen and listen deeply it is calling you by name it is calling you and whispering your name your essence your soul hear me in your heart I am calling you Listen to your heart, I am here, hear me in your heart, I am calling you, listen to your heart, I am here, calling out your name. Whispering your name Hear me in your heart I am calling you Listen to your heart I am here Hear me in your heart I am calling you Listen to your heart, I am here, calling out your name, whispering your name, hear me in your heart. I am calling you, listen to your heart, I am here. Listen and listen deeply. the heart is the first organ to appear when we come into physical form it is the first organ which develops in a human fetus it is often called the seat of the soul 
because the human heart is the first interface between our non-physical soul and our physical body. Its electromagnetic field is unparalleled. If we are able to get in touch with our hearts, we will be able to get in touch with our higher selves, the eternal, benevolent essence that we truly are, which is the true goal of spirituality. Spiritual life is not about knowing much. It is about loving much. It is about getting in touch with our truest self. It is about opening our heart so wide opening our hearts so wide that enemy is not a concept which exists in our reality. And more than that, it is about opening the heart and living from the heart to such a degree that eventually, eventually there is also no such concept in our life as other. Mahansa was once asked, how should I treat others? His answer was, there are no others. You know, thoughts are contained in the body field, which is an energetic field that unites all of us. Thoughts are communicated to the body through the heart first. The heart then sends those signals to the brain which acts as an interface to that which is non-physical and that which is physical. But the heart is the very first feed from non-physical into physical reality. Getting closer to the heart is your way to get closer to that which is eternal about you. Non-physical energy or source energy. In order to move from the mind into the heart space, it is of benefit to treat the heart as if it is its own entity. We can let it speak its truth. We can let it express its own wisdom. And we can have it help us make decisions in our day-to-day -day life as if it is a, a mini ally. Always ask your heart. Go in. Your brain tells you that you are separate from everything else. The heart does not buy into that illusion. Treat the heart as a friend. When you have to make decisions in your life, you can run those decisions by your heart. Your heart will always tell you what the right answer and the right direction is. In order to move from the mind into the space of the heart, we need to make a place in our lives for quiet so that we can hear the voice of the heart. Meditation. Meditation is the best way to quiet the mind. When we get the mind out of the way, the heart can have dominion. Live from intuition, not logic. Intuition is the perspective of the higher self it is the most objective perspective that there is. It is always, always, it is always in alignment with your highest good. In order to live from the heart space, let your personal cup overflow with love, joy, kindness, and compassion. In addition, live in the present moment and cultivate detachment. Gratitude is also highly important. If you only ever say one prayer in your whole life, thank you is a pretty good one. And be honest with yourself and others. Living from the heart is living your true essence. It is your truest 
and most natural state. Let's take that into another meditation. Imagine you're encircled by people who love you. Sit comfortably. You can close your eyes or have them open. It doesn't matter. And imagine yourself in the center of a circle made up of the most loving beings you've met. There may be some people in your circle who you've never met, but have been inspired by. Maybe they exist now or they've existed historically or even mythically. Receive the love of those who love you. Experience yourself as the recipient of the energy, attention, care, and regard of all of these beings in your circle of love. Silently repeat whatever phrases are expressive of that which you most wish for yourself, not just for today, but in an enduring way. Phrases that are big and open. Maybe something like, may I be safe, be happy, be healthy. May I be safe, be happy, be healthy. I am safe, I am happy, I am healthy. Live with ease of heart. May I be safe, be happy, be healthy. Live, live with ease of heart. Notice how you feel when you receive love. As you experience yourself in the center of the circle, all kinds of different emotions may arise. You may feel gratitude and awe, or you might feel kind of shy. Like you would rather duck down and have all of these things send loving kindness to one another and forget about you. Whatever emotions may arise, just let it wash through you. Your touchstone is those phrases, may I be happy, may I be peaceful, or whatever phrase you've chosen. That is your touchstone. Open yourself up to receiving love. Imagine that your skin is porous and this warm, loving energy is coming in. Imagine yourself receiving. Imagine yourself receiving. There's nothing special that you need to do to deserve this kind of acknowledgement or care. It's simply, simply because you exist. Receive love. Open yourself up to receiving love. There's nothing special that you need to do to deserve this kind of acknowledgement or care. It's simply because you exist. Now send loving care to the people in your circle. You can allow that quality of loving kindness and compassion and care you feel coming towards you to flow right out back to the circle and then toward all beings everywhere so that what you receive, you transform into giving. You give the quality of care and kindness that does actually exist in this world. It does. That can become part of you and part of what you express or return. Open your eyes or lift your gaze.
as we end this meditation. I invite you to take a very deep breath with me. We're going to go back down yet again. But right now, sometimes we, we hold a space that meditation has to look a certain way, a certain posture, and oh, we have to have our eyes closed. But consider with us tonight that open eyes moving about our world that the meditation has not ended. And so we invite you into a space right now with your eyes fully wide open to enter a space where you are willing to be changed at depth. And the willingness itself is a meditation, an open-eyed meditation. And I invite you to take your hand and place it upon your heart right now. And to know that the power of the stillness does not exist in a certain posture or form, but exists at the very, as the very presence of who you are. Feel that heart beating, that which you knew in the stillness and the quiet. You cannot be separate from it. The love that is emanating from that space that Michael put us in, you cannot and never will be separate from it. And so we take a moment to sing the words, I am one with the heart of the mother. I am one with the heart of love. Whether awake, asleep, still and quiet, or in the midst of the chaos of a world that needs the love that I have to offer. I am one with the heart of the Father. I am one with God. Let us know together with open eyes, still breathing, still reflecting, still still and quiet on the inside. I am one with the heart of the mother. I am one with the heart of love. I am one with the heart of the father. I am one with God. I am one with the heart of the mother. I am one with the heart of love. I am one with the heart of the Father. I am one with God. Bring some space in your world, in your life. Bring it into this moment and to merge the two, the heart and the experience, the heart and the condition, the heart and the situation, and bundle it up in a beautiful consciousness of oneness, one with the mother, father presence of all that is, love, God, Hold it right there as we sing it again. I am one with the heart of the mother. I am one with the heart of love. I am one with the heart of the Father. I am one with God. I am one with the heart of the mother. I am one with the heart of love. I am one with the heart of the father. I am one with God. 
once again, closing your eyes, bringing that which is in your life and in your world into the sanctuary of your very essence and being, the very love that you are that resides at the center of your chest as love itself. I am one with the heart of the mother. I am one with the heart of love. I am one with the heart of the Father. I am one with God. Let us rest there in a time of silence, a time of oneness in the silence. Continue to breathe. Continue to be one. Continue to be still. And continue to be the heart of God. This time of reflection brings us to any place of incongruity between love and our heart and who we have been. So it's a place of change. Let our human heart be changed by the spiritual heart that has revealed that which needs to be revealed. Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. May I be like you. Create in me, O oh God, a heart that's ever true. Create in me, O oh God, a heart that's formed in you. Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you.
one final reading for the evening. Let it seep into the pores of your very essence, into the pores of your very willingness to change at depth and to be the heart of God. Let it sink deep within you. Honored to talk about the heart tonight with my every breath. I strive to open my heart and expand the hearts around me. I love that. It allows passion in our lives. My heart deep inside of me yours deep inside of you. It lay inside in comfort, waiting to be shared. It wants to ride the forefront. Only pure when it is bared to flow inside the movement, spill its grace on every beach. It sculpts the clay we call ourselves and puts me deep inside of you. For it is passion that I speak of and in all it has to be. For to live our lives without it is to never really see the bristles of the brush that paint the sky before the dawn or the hand that weaves its wonder upon our soul when we are born. We can work and play and drift away to corners far beyond our means. We can fly so high with passion that oftentimes it seems it is this alone that matters for without it without it what could be it sculpts the clay we call ourselves and puts you deep inside of me For it is passion that has made us, and it is passion we shall give. We will find its strength together, and our hearts. Our hearts will teach us how to live. Love one another. master teacher was asked what is the greatest commandment and he replied to love God with all your heart all your mind and all your soul And that the second is like the first. Love your brother and your sister as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. The world needs us to be the heart of God. The world needs you to be the heart of God. Let us take on the mantle of the responsibility as we end our time of reflection, bringing our awareness back into the surroundings bringing our awareness back to the computer that you might be looking at, or the phone, or the people around you in the room right now. 
fellow travelers, fellow selves within the heart of God. We need each other. Let's remember this. And let's be this. And so once again, we return to the breath. But perhaps a little more conscious than when we started, a little bit more awake, a little bit more aware that that breath contains within it everything that we need to be that which we are called to be. And so, Michael, thank you for what you have shared with us this evening. Always a pleasure to be with you. He always comes up with some really interesting readings and poems, and you had some really real winners tonight. And I uh, thank you for offering the wisdom in each of those words. If what we've done here this evening had value to you, and I hope it did, I invite you to find a way to say thank you. Those of us in the room, there's a couple of baskets in the back. That's a way that you can put something in there, a blessing, a donation, to say thank you. Those of you online, it's pretty easy to do, to just text to give, to set up text to give to this community that's putting on all kinds of different presentations and services and classes. I invite you to check the website out to see all that's going on. But right now, I invite you to just simply text out of your phone or to write a check and send it to the church at our address and know that it is received with great gratitude. Text to give is so very simple, 73256, and you text Unity North and that which you feel is an appropriate way to say thank you for what Michael and I have created here this evening. And I hope that the value of what you've received here doesn't stay in this time and that we just go about business being a human being, but that what we've done here is awakened a part of you to go forth and to be a spiritual being and that your life, your family, your work, and every place you find yourself is a different, a different, more loving, heart-centered place as a result of what you've done here. I thank you for joining us tonight. And uh, Michael will be back with us again in two weeks. And uh, I want to let you know that the last Sunday or the last Wednesday in uh, September is this very special Wednesday night service out in the parking lot. We're going to be out con convening with Mother Nature and we're going to be convening with the mystics throughout time and modern mystics and contemporaries. A wonderful service is being planned out there. I hope you'll join us for the last Wednesday in September. And then a new chapter on Wednesday night. We'll be wrapping with the Rev is coming back. From 7 to 7.30, we'll have a meditation. But at 7.30, we're going to discuss. Bring your ideas into the space, both online and in the room. Questions. Bring your questions. Bring your answers. Bring your heart. And let's just be together as family. So it's going to be a little different. Mark your calendar to be a part of that next chapter. Right now, let's just, let's recognize love and send it to the people in the room, send it to the people online through the airwaves with this very familiar song by the Beatles. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. It's easy. Sing it with me. All you need is love. All you need is love. All you need is love. Love. Love is all you need. Those of you in the room, I'm going to invite you to stand with me. Open eyed meditation, open eyed expression of love. All you need is love. Take a look around the room. All you need is love all you need is love 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 is all you need thanks so much for joining us have a wonderful evening we'll see you on sunday morning as we continue our series on divine ideas have a blessed and beautiful evening All you need is love 
All you need is love. All you need is love. Love. Love is all you need. 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 Good night, everyone.